In today's video, we're going to go over an explanation and two very interesting example problems for electric potential energy and electric potential difference when we're moving a charged particle through a uniform electric field. All right, now before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please subscribe, support our channel, click the notifications bell, give it a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, I made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials which you can find my Teachers Pay Teachers website where you're looking for practice problems, exam problems with all the solutions, notes, some puzzles, and interesting activities you can do with PHET interactive simulations. It's all at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And here we get started for electric potential energy. Now, I want to mention I made a previous video about work and parallel plates in uniform field. You can link to that in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But once again, we have our charged parallel plates, a positive plate and a negative plate, and therefore we have an electric field between those plates. And the electric field always goes from the positive plate to the negative plate, and they're some distance apart d and we have a charged particle in that plate and we're going to have a negative particle right here it is of course it's going to be attracted to this positive plate and we want to move this particle from left to right and figure out and talk about how much work we're going to do and what the change in the potential energy of that particle is going to be now in its in that field there is an electric field force a force from the electric field that points to the left if we want to move that particle to the right some distance, or all the way to the negative plate, we are going to have to apply an external force. And we're going to apply that external force so that we move that charge through that electric field at a constant velocity. So we're going to move that charge all the way across like that. And when we do that, the external force is going to be equal to the force from the electric field. All right? Now, when we calculate the amount of work, we're going to use this equation, just like we did in the previous video. The work is equal to the force times the distance, okay, through which the charge is moved, and times the cosine of theta, which we'll talk about in a moment again. And we're usually not given the force. Usually we're given the distance, but you're not given the force, but you're going to be given the electric field strength and the amount of charge that you're going to be moving. So we can rearrange the electric field equation to solve for the force. The force is equal to the charge times the electric field strength. We can substitute that back into our equation and we get that the work that we do is equal to the charge times the field strength times the distance times the cosine of theta. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, the force, the external force points in this direction, the displacement vector also points in the same direction. They're parallel to each other. The angle theta is the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. And when you move a charge through the field like that, you're usually moving it parallel to the field. And the force and the displacement are in the same direction. They're parallel. And therefore, the angle between those two vectors, theta, is zero degrees. And this says the cosine of theta and the cosine of zero degrees if you remember your cosine curve where you look it up on your calculator, is 1. And that means this term is 1, so we usually just use this equation in this form like that. We usually don't move charges across the field. We move them parallel to the field and through the field. So this is the equation that we can use to calculate the work, and the work done is going to, by that external force is going to be positive. Now, by definition, the work that is done is equal to the change in the potential energy. So this is the, this isn't really an equation, but this is a concept that you should be aware of. The work that is done by the external force is equal to the change in the potential energy. So if we can calculate one of these, we know the other. And usually when we calculate the work or the potential energy, we can use this equation that Q is equal to E times D. Usually you see this equation in this form with W stands for work, but you can also substitute in there the change in the potential energy. And we'll see that in one of the examples that we're going to go over. All right. So this is a concept that you should be aware of. Like I said, it isn't really an equation, but you should just be aware of that work is equal to the change in potential. The work done is equal to the change in the potential energy, and we can calculate either of those Q, E, D. All right, now, what are we going to do next? So we have electric potential energy. Now, when we, I just want to, the next step when we talk about electric potential energy and work is we have our charge over here now, and it, we're holding it over here with this force. 
against this negative plate because this is a negative charge, this is a negative plate, and they're repelling each other. And when we move that charge over there, we gave it some change in potential energy. We did some work and we gave it some potential energy. Well, if we remove the external force, okay, if we were to remove this force, then that charge would move back over here to the positive plate. And as it moves back over there to the positive plate, the energy that we gave it, the potential energy that we gave it, would be reduced and it would go back to zero when it reaches the positive plate. Well, where did all that potential energy go? Well, you can't just get rid of energy, conservation of energy. Well, that energy turned into motion, and that motion is in the form of kinetic energy. So we move that charge across like that. It gains velocity. It's losing potential energy as it moves back, and it's gaining kinetic energy like that. So we can say, through conservation of energy, that the energy that it had over here in the potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy that it's going to have right here before it hits the plate. Okay, and we can write that down like that. And we know that the kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, so we can use this relationship to solve for the velocity. That's a common question is, if you move a plate, how much work do you do? What's the change in potential energy? When you release it, how fast is it going to be going when it gets back here? And we'll do that in one of the examples where we'll solve for the velocity because the potential energy can be calculated as QED. The kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, and we can use this equation to solve for the velocity. Now, before we do the example, let's go over electric potential difference. What is electric potential difference? Well, by definition, electric potential difference is defined as the change in the potential energy per unit of charge. And we write that down like this. Okay, the potential difference has the, this delta V, like the voltage is basically the same thing as the voltage, the change in the voltage. The change in the voltage, as it says here by nef definition, is the change in the potential energy per unit of charge that we move through the field. So this is the equation that we have for the potential difference. Now, usually when we use this equation, we actually use it in this form. Okay, we just solve for the PE. The potential energy is equal to Q, the charge, times the voltage through which that charge is used. Excuse me, through which that charge is moved. This is kind of definition. This is a little bit more how we use this equation. You'll see it in this form. And actually, we know now that the potential energy is equal to the work that was done. So we also see it written like this. Okay, and we're going to use it in both forms in our um, example problems. Now, the potential difference or the voltage has the units of joules per coulomb because we're dividing the potential energy which is measured in joules uh, divided that by the charge which is measured in coulomb so it's joules per coulomb which we just abbreviate that or we simplify that as voltage that is what is known as volts all right if you have like a nine volt battery that means that that battery can supply nine joules of potential energy to each coulomb of charge now, we can take this equation also, and we can simplify this equation because you remember now that the change in the voltage is equal to the change in the potential energy divided by the charge. Well, we can calculate the potential energy as QED, as I showed you in the previous slide and we did in the previous video, and we're going to divide that by Q. Well, this charge and this charge are the same charge. So we can simplify that, and then we can use this equation to find the change in the voltage. Change in the voltage between two parallel plates is simply the electric field strength between the plates times the distance between the plates. This equation can only be used for uniform electric fields, which we find between parallel plates. Now, we haven't talked too much about it in the last few videos, but we cannot use this equation for point charges. This is only for uniform fields, which we find between parallel plates. Okay? Now, let me just uh, kind of give you a little bit, show you a little bit how we would use that terminology. So, for example, here's our parallel plates. Here's our electric field. And it might, you might get a problem that says something as part of the problem is that an electron moves through a potential difference of 10,000 volts. Okay, the change in the potential between these two plates is 10,000 volts. Like this electron is here, as we had in our previous example. It's going to move this way. All right, we, you could say the voltage between the plates, the potential difference between the plates... And the way it works is that 
the positive plate is at the higher voltage, just by convention. Okay, positive plate, higher voltage. So this plate is at 10,000 volts, and this plate over here is at zero volts. The potential between them is 10,000 volts. Okay, now let's go through a little summary here just to kind of summarize the equations before we get on with our example. You should kind of notice that all these things are really related to each other. The work, the potential energy, the kinetic energy. But remember, the work that you do on a charge is going to be equal to the potential energy you give it. And you can calculate the work as either Q, the charge times the electric field strength times the diff distance between the plates, or you can use this equation, and that just says that the amount of work that you do, the energy you give it, is equal to Q, the charge, times the potential through which that charge is moved. And if you want to know the potential for parallel plates, you can use this equation, the potential difference between the plates is equal to the electric field strength times the distance. Okay, now, here are the two examples. We, we have this one, number one says, an electron is moved through a potential difference of 3,000 volts. How much work do we do on the charge? What's the change in the potential energy and how fast will the electron be moving when it's released? So, we have an electron, it's stuck here. It has no potential energy because it's stuck there where it wants to be. We're gonna take an external force and we're gonna move it and we're gonna do work because we have to apply an external force and we're gonna give it potential energy. Then we're gonna release it and figure out how fast it's gonna be going. So, here's our equations. Now, in this problem, we're given the voltage and we're given the charge. Now, we're told that it's an electron, so you should know or you can look up the charge on an electron if you don't know that. We don't know the electric field strength. We don't know the distance. So, we're gonna use this relationship, work, potential, energy, and this equation right here. So, first thing is it wants to know how much work is done. So, the work is equal to the charge and the potential through which it's moved. Okay, this is the charge on an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. It says it's moved through a potential difference of 3,000 volts, and so that means we would do, that external force would do 4.8 times 10 to the minus 16 joules of work to move that electron. All right, now, the next question it asks us is, what's the change in the potential energy? Well, you can see right here the work is equal to the change in the potential energy. We've gone over that a bunch of times. Therefore, the work is equal to the potential energy, and it's the 4.8 times 10 to the minus 16. When you do work on a charge or on an object, you give it potential energy, and uh, those two are equal to each other. The amount of work you do is equal to the change in the potential energy. Okay, now how fast is it going to be moving? So here we go. Here's the potential energy we gave it, which is equal to the work. We said earlier that the potential energy that we give it it's going to be equal to the kinetic energy it's going to have when it moves back to this positively charged plate. So those two are equal to each other. We're going to use that relationship. Remember the kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. We know the potential energy here. So therefore, we can just use this relationship. It says that the potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy, kinetic energy being one-half mv squared. And we're going to solve this equation for the velocity. Now we have one half mv squared. We got to get the velocity all by itself. The way we're going to do that, I'm not going to go through the whole thing step by step. I think we should know how to do that already. But we're going to multiply both sides by two. That'll get rid of our one half. We're going to divide by m to move that to the other side. And then we're going to take the square root. And we end up with the velocity is two times the potential energy uh, divided by the mass. The square root of two times the potential energy divided by the mass. All right, all right. So we're just going to plug those values in. Um, 2 times 4.80 times 10 to the minus 16 is the amount of work or the potential energy. And this is the a mass of an electron, in case you didn't know that. And you get that that electron would be moving 3.2 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. That's pretty fast. That's 32 million meters per second. All right, that's pretty quick. All right, that is example number one. I believe now we're going to go to. Okay, so for number two, we're going to consider you have a proton, and you're going to be moving the proton from the negatively charged plate to the positively charged plate. The plates, this time, are given the distance and the electric field strength, and we're going to answer these four questions, basically the same thing. What is the change in the electric potential energy of the proton? How much work would you do? Uh, what's the potential difference between the plates? That's the new thing. And how fast is it going to be going when we release it and move it back? All right, now once again, the same thing here. We have the positively charged plate. It's being held here by the electric field force because we have a positive, a positive charge, a negative plate. They're attracted to each other. To get that to the other side, we're going to have to do some work. 
the amount of work is going to be, the work is going to be done by this external force. The amount of work is equal to the change in the potential energy. Then we can calculate the potential difference, and then we can release the charge. It'll fall back down to the negative plate, and we can calculate the velocity. So what is the change in the potential? Now, we have our same equations. In this case, we're given the charge because we know it's a proton. We're given the electric field strength. We're given the distance. So we're going to use this equation now to calculate the work. Just plug everything in like this. This is the charge on a proton. An electron and a proton have the same charge. They have a different mass, of course. And we're given the electric field strength, and we're given the distance to centimeters convert to meters. And then you can see that the change in the potential energy is 6.0 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Well, where did that energy come from? Well, that energy came from the work that was done on the charge. Now we know the change in the potential energy. Well, the, you can see up here the potential energy and the work are the same. We did work. We gave it potential energy. How much work did we do? Well, we did 1.6 times 10 to the minus 1.6, 6.0 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. These two values are equivalent to each other. It's the same thing when you lift an object up off the table, off the floor. You apply a force through a distance. You do work, and you give the object mechanical potential energy. This is electric potential energy. Okay, so we did A and B. Now, <clears throat> before I lose my voice, um, we can do what is the potential difference. Well, this is our equation for the potential difference. We're given the distance. We're given the electric field strength. So we can simply plug those values in. All right, 1,500 newtons per coulomb. And that means that the potential difference between those plates is 37.5 volts. Now, the difference between them is 37.5. This could be 10, and this could be 47.5. Or this could be 100, and this could be 137.5. Usually we say, by convention, we say that the positive plate is at the higher potential. So we just say that would be 37.5 and this would be zero. Okay? But it doesn't matter what numbers as long as this one is higher and the difference is 37.5 volts. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing basically. How fast is it going to be moving? I thought I'd just go through a little bit more of a derivation of the conservation of any energy idea for this one. So when we move the charge over here, we give it potential energy. Okay? When we move this chart, we, oh, that's right, it started here, we move it over here, we gave it some potential, and we gave it this much. But we're holding it there, so it has no kinetic energy. So it has no kinetic energy. It's not moving. When we release the charge that moves back, it's going to be losing potential energy, gaining kinetic energy, because it's gaining velocity, and therefore, over here, it's going to have no potential energy. When it falls back down, all the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy, and then it's going to have that much kinetic energy. So we can say this conservation of energy, because there's no non-conservative force, there's no friction. The potential and the energy initial, which this is the initial side we're saying, it starts here when we release it. And the kinetic energy, though you add those up and they'll be equal to the final, which is on this side over here. The final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. Now, this kinetic energy initial is zero. This potential energy final is zero. So those two terms go away, and that simplifies to that. And therefore, we can say that the potential energy initial over here is going to be equal to the kinetic energy over here. That's how that derivation comes about. So now we can just solve for the velocity again. The velocity is 2 times the potential energy divided by the mass. Okay, And sometimes you'll see in this equation Ke, because they're the same, potential energy is equal to kinetic energy. And then we just plug the values in, and the particle is moving with 8.5. The proton is moving 8.5 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. Okay? Okay. So, there you go. That was, I think, a nice complete explanation of electric potential energy and electric potential difference. And then we went over two amazing example problems for calculating the work, the potential energy, the potential difference across the plates, and also the velocity of the particle as it moves back to where it wants to be. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel. Support our channel, Step-by-Step -step Science, please. Get all our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Give it a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.